few minutes for our program. And we're going to run straight through without any political advertisements or anything tonight. So, you, know, you do not have to worry about that. Um, my name is James Klein. I'm with Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. And this is my wife, Barb, from Rockwell Collins. And we're pleased to serve again this year as the Sinclair Chairs for United Way. Um, before I forget, I don't know where Pat and Judy have went, but we clearly want to thank Pat and Judy for opening their house. I guess they're in the back there. Thank you very much for allowing us to have you event. Um, clearly a beautiful home and gorgeous settings. Uh, if you haven't caught them yet, be sure to take a look outside. And then also we'd like to thank the event sponsors for tonight. My employer, Larry Helling, is president of Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. Woo! Mercy Medical Center is another of our sponsors tonight. And Paulson Electric and PEC Communications. We clearly couldn't do this event without the sponsorship of those companies. Thank you. Sinclair Society is a very important leadership program for United Way. In fact, we raised almost $2 million last year and almost 20% of the overall campaign. So clearly what you guys are doing in this room is making a huge difference. This year, we're led by two very energetic people that I'd like to... Actually, a four. <laughs> They're twins, yes. I'd like to introduce Mark and Kathy Gullickson, this year's campaign chairs. Thank you very much and thank you all for being here and I'm going to be the cheerleader because I can't not and just say thank you the reason that you're here is because you do wonderful things with United Way and United Way I can assure you does wonderful things with your donations so thank you so much and keep coming back but I decided this time I would do something a little unconventional for me although there's a math major in my background <laughs> I'm going to talk about some numbers and the first number that comes to mind for me tonight is 100,000. 100,000 is the number of people who were helped last year by United Way agencies and programs. 100,000, it's a lot. And if you're wondering about how many of those are in Lynn County, in Lynn County, 38% of the population were served by United Way agencies last year. Astounding, I think. Now, where did that come from? 22,000 donors. 22,000. And every year, of course, we have a few that we lose. Some leave the community. Some retire, and we lose track of them. So this year, one of our challenges is to try to keep track of all those folks and to find those retirees and not let them sever their relationships with us just because they don't have a paycheck that it gets taken out of every month. So we are after you if you are retirees. We want you to stay connected with United Way. We also have a goal this year of 3,500 new donors. So if you can help us with that, think about people that should be giving and give us their names or better yet, ask them yourselves. Another number I want to talk about, 500. 500 companies in this area are involved with United Way and having campaigns of their own or making corporate donations. 500 is a lot of companies. We need more. So this year we have a goal, 25 new companies. And some of you might be able to help us with that too. Are there companies you know of that don't have an employee campaign? Are there some that maybe have in the past but have lapsed? Let us know, or better yet, ask them yourself. Tell them, our company does this, you need to, you should. We need 25 more, and why do we? Because of course the needs of those 100,000 seem to just keep multiplying. So you know the need is there. Now there are always some really bright points and I'd love to talk about those. So I'll talk about some numbers related to our pace setter companies. Rainy Rose was one of our pace setters this year, and those of you that were with us last Thursday night for the kickoff already know this number. But Rainy Rose had a $10,000 increase. So they went from around 22 to around 33,000. Um, a fabulous increase for them. 
Percentage-wise, it was 42%. That's another number. And our other pace setter campaign, Skogman, and Kyle is here, and others I think maybe as well, and we really appreciate your work. They were both fabulously successful, and Skogman also had a 27% increase. Now we do have challenges. There are workforce cutbacks, as we know. That's a challenge. We have, believe it or not, reluctant company leaders. Un unbelievable, but we do. Um, so there are still some challenges. And I know all of you in these rooms are with us in this deal and will do whatever you can to help us with those challenges. I have no doubt, I have no doubt that 100,000 will also be served again next year. I have no doubt because, um, because of all of you and because of the kind of community that we live in. So thank you very much. I have one more number. There are companies, believe it or not, that have 100% participation in their United Way campaigns. So if yours isn't one of those, here's a challenge. It exists, it happens, it's possible. So thank you all so much. Um, those are my numbers for tonight. They're fabulous numbers and it's all because of each and every single one of you. So thank you. And I'll let Mark talk because I'm sure I left something out. <laughs> I walked in here tonight, once again, I was reminded of my favorite movie, if you've not seen The Big Chill. It's about a lot about Michigan people, and we're both Michigan people, University of Michigan. And there's a line in the morning where they're sitting around the breakfast table and the character says, we're not leaving, we're never leaving. <laughs> so, Judy and Pat, I hope you have lots of eggs. <laughs> a quick story about giving, and then we're gonna pass the, uh, the baton back here. Uh, about 15, 18 years ago, we helped at our church a refugee and his family. His name was Vikas de Gebrekan, come over from Eritrea. And over the years, I thought about Tikesta because we're the same age, and but for accident of birth, we have very similar careers to a point. He was a government um, official, had lots of success, but when problems broke out in his country, he ended up uh, having to escape with his life and lived four years in a refugee camp where he met his wife. We think he probably got married and had children there because that was the only way you could get out of a refugee camp. He came here, and that's where we met him at our church, and our church has always reached back to kind of help Tequesta and his family, who has basically, over the last 18 years, done every kind of menial job, despite his education, uh, imaginable. And again, other than accident of birth, it could have been me, and he could have been one of us, having born, been born in a, a much better situation. Well, I, I thought about that quite a bit, and about 10 years ago, I said to myself, you know, it's, it's not just a matter of helping Tequesta, who's, maybe if you're looking at a continuum, you've got all of us here, and you've got Tequesta far over here on the right, but you have all of these people in between us. It's not just black and white. It's not just far left and far right in terms of uh, accomplishment. We just maybe are sort of the bookends. And I always thought over the years, we should not just be helping Tequesta, which our church was trying to do, but we should be trying to reach to the right and help all those people between us. Well, I had a second Tequesta revelation about three weeks ago when it was announced that he was going home to help his village build a well. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting because it really points out that we're reaching to the right and here's Tequesta reaching to the right. So I think our obligation is people planted here uh, and by accident of birth pretty successful, but we should continue to reach to the right. And who knows, maybe sometime somebody on our left will come over and help us too. So that's my message, reach to the right. <laughs> Thank you. Clearly, United Way is in very good hands with the Gulksons leading it this year. So thank, you. thank you for all of your leadership. Uh, one thing we introduced last year and we, we got great feedback on is, why don't we bring a couple people that have experienced United Way in quite a personal level to this event so that they can tell our, their story, really make it real for all of us. So we're gonna do that again tonight. We have two speakers. The first is Alexis Riley, and she's used one of our community partners. She's part of Community Corrections Association's Leadership Resilience Program, correct? Yeah. And so please, please join me in welcoming Alexis so we can hear how United Way has impacted her.
Um, my name is Alexis Riley. I'm 17 and a senior at Washington High School. I've been a member of the Youth Leadership Program for four years now. I was nominated my freshman year to be a part of the subgroup. Um, it's called LRP, which stands for the Leadership and Resiliency Program. Um, we focus on three main things, um, those being resi resiliency groups, uh, community service, and ad adventure activities. Um, in middle school, I was not known to be the best student. Um, I didn't make you know, very great decisions, and I lacked a lot of responsibility. Um, freshman year in high school, I was nominated shortly after my first trimester, um, and it really helped me you know, focus on a lot more positive things and um, you know, focus more on my schoolwork and getting a lot of things that should be focused on done. Um, I have seen firsthand how the group has helped a lot of other students, um, like fellow group members, and one in particular, she wasn't really, she's very shy and didn't really you know, how to know how to speak up for herself and stand up for herself around others. Um, she did confide in me and mentioned to me one time how students you know, weren't very nice to her and even mentioned things how like during lunch they'd throw stuff at her and throw food at her and different things like that. And, um, one of my friends and I actually, we all had early bird together, so we all normally ate breakfast in the morning and we noticed, you know, every morning she was eating by herself, so we stepped up and ate breakfast with her and just kind of talked to her and, you know, asked her how her day was going and just tried to make her feel more comfortable. Um, and over the years I have seen, she has really grown and is really good with other students, like anything from just talking to someone else in the hallway to even interacting and in-class discussions. Um, and I have noticed she is a lot more happier now, and she just seems like everything's a lot better than the, the first time we met. Um, in LRP, we have weekly meetings. We meet every Tuesday during lunch um, at school, just in whichever teacher lets us use their classroom or whoever has an available classroom at the time. Um, we talk about anything from how our day is going to what service project we're working on at that time. Um, we do service projects, we fundraise, we do adventure activities, um, just anything under those categories. The students, we're the ones who do all of the planning. We do everything from making flyers to, you know, calling businesses and finding out critical information about the project that's coming up. And that does help us, you know, build our leadership skills and really puts a lot of responsibility on us that I think is very needed. Um, we also do adventure activities, and the thing is you have to participate in the service project to be able to be a part of the adventure activity. Um, my favorite service project was when we um, donated a lot of like non-perishable food items and hygiene products to the Match Phillips Center. Uh, the way we did it is we hosted and organized a movie day um, at a like community center. It's called Groundswell. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, um, but we invited all of the younger youth leadership people, um, like the kids who are like in middle school, um, and we used the, the items like the food and the hygiene products as the admission to get in. So you had to bring something, you know, to be able to come in. Um, and then everything that we collected from that, we then donated to the center. And it was just a really good experience. We got to go on a tour and just see how everything works. Um, and just kind of, we even got to, you know, look in the pantry and just see all the different things from like diapers to cookies to just everything. They were just full of so much stuff you wouldn't even think would be in there. Um, we also last year did a, a, we volunteered at the Ronald McDonald House. We cooked them a meal. We just, we made um, like walking tacos, but it was just really fun being able to go there and like meet with all the families and, you know, eat dinner with them and um, just cook for them. It was just really cool just seeing how all of that works. Um, my favorite adventure activity was over this last summer. We went paintballing, which was a really crazy experience, and it hurts really bad. Um, but it was really fun, and there's just so many things that you or me, you know, I would not experience without this this organization, this group, and it's just really cool knowing that, you know, just by being a part of something, like, there's just so many different things we're able to do, and, like, me personally, I, I just love, like, helping people out, like, just seeing something that I did make someone else happy is just, it just makes my whole entire day, um, and it's just really, there's so many other students in the group as well, you, especially me, you know, being a senior, I've just seen so many people just mature and just grow over the years and the group I do believe had a lot to do with that and it just really helps us step up and take responsibility for things that we're doing. Um, 
Yeah, and um, I am like, <laughs> I'm really grateful for the youth leadership program and especially LRP. And the staff is just really amazing. They really do care about us and them showing how much they're concerned about what's going on in our lives really means a lot. I mean, I have definitely enjoyed being a part of such an amazing thing. Um, and I'm really sad to say, you know, this is my last year, um, but I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. And I do recommend a lot of other students, you know, to take advantage of the opportunity because it's, ex it's an experience you'll never forget. Thank you so much, Alexis. What a great speaker. Wasn't she amazing? James and I went to school together since we were in first grade, and I know what his grades were like. He probably could have benefited from a program like this. That was not on the script. <laughs> well, as you know, the United Way focuses on three impact areas, uh, education, financial stability, and health. Uh, our next speaker has rece received services in the health arena. Um, United Way's community health goal is to increase healthy choices by 10% um, in five years. And last year we were invested over $1.7 million into nine health programs um, to help accomplish this. One of the key initiatives is to improve and maintain a physical and mental health of individuals and families. Uh, according to the National Alliance on Mental Health, one out of four persons uh, has a diagnosable mental illness. So right now we're gonna hear a little bit more about Foundation Two's programs and how they're helping us achieve our community health goals. So please help me welcome Jill Hockaday. I've always worked for an employer who participates in the United Way and have faithfully donated every year. I wanted to help others that are in need, and not in a million years though did I ever think that I'd have to use some of the services that were provided by United Way. I was scared to death to be a single parent, but had to be strong for my kids. And I think the worst time was at night when I put them to bed and I had the time for my brain to wander. One night in particular, I was having a hard time I couldn't stop crying, and it was too late to bother anyone with my problems. However, I could not calm myself down. So this was the first time I came in contact with Foundation 2 when I called their helpline. I didn't know what to expect, but even though I was crying so hard, I couldn't tell them what was wrong. The person that was on the other end of the line, though, took the time to ask me yes and no questions that I could answer, and got to the point where after I was able to tell her with yes or no answers. She was able to figure out what's wrong and be able to talk to me, and then I was able to actually talk to her. I never felt the need to call them again, but always knew they were there if I did. Over the years, I found myself, my kids and I became stronger as a family, and I met a wonderful man with three kids himself. We got married in 2007, and our new family life began. Just like with any family, we had our ups and downs, but life was going pretty good. Well, I thought it was. One night in February last year, or a year ago, a year and a half ago, my 16-year-old son took his own life. Again, life completely stopped, and I honestly had no idea where to start to pick up the pieces of my shattered heart. I wasn't even sure I wanted to. A friend of my husband's contacted him as her brother had also committed suicide. She met with me and told me about the Suicide Survivor Support Group. My husband and I started attending that group, and it has been amazingly helpful. It is comforting to know that I'm not crazy in some of my fears and some of my thoughts. And there are other people out there going through the same thing that are feeling the same way I am. The people are very supportive and have helped us get over that hump of the year of the first horrible firsts. And it's also wonderful having others who lost people who come back to group to help others and gave me hope that I'm someday gonna to get to that place too. Now I can actually say that I know I'm still grieving, but I'm gonna be okay. <sighs> um, this, the group is called the Suicide Survivor Support Group. Foundation Two is a supporter of this, and of course they are helped by United Way. 
funded by United Way. This group has been very important to me that I've only missed one time in the past year and a half, and that was just due to medical reasons. Foundation 2 also offers quite a few other services. All of their services came from a need that they found in the community that other, other providers were not giving. They try not to duplicate anything that anybody else is doing. Some of their other services, the 24-hour crisis hotline that I spoke about, the support groups, they have a survivors of suicide support group, depression and anxiety support groups. They have a mobile crisis outreach program that is amazing that if somebody is in your family or some friend, you know, is very close to doing something severe, you can get somebody from Foundation 2 to come and help you with them within two hours. Two people will come that are qualified to help with that situation. After hours food pantry, so for people that can't make it when other um, companies or other organizations are open, they have a youth shelter for ages 11 to 17. This could be for kids that are either themselves having problems or maybe their families are having problems and they need to get out of the house. They have therapy, they have family counseling, they also have transitional housing for young adults. So this helps the kids who are maybe getting out of the foster kids program be able to learn how to live on their own and they help them actually migrate to that living on their own. I want to thank you for your time and listening to my story and how Foundation 2 has helped me through some of the tough times in my life. I also want to thank you for your donations to United Way because it supports Foundation 2 that's very important to me. Well, that's why we give to United Way, right there. I mean, we, we can get up here and give you stats, which are great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Barb and I grew up in Cedar Rapids, and we have three children, and we get so busy doing our everyday things, and we just don't always realize that there's such great need in Cedar Rapids, and so, Hearing some of these stories always puts things into perspective and makes you realize how fortunate you are, how many there are in the community that need our help. And so United Way is such a great vehicle to, uh, to connect those two, two arms together. So thank you again, both of you, for your great stories. Um, in a minute, I'm going to introduce Lois, but... Uh, for those of you know that know that uh, or know that I work for Larry and know Larry, I could not come here and not have a goal. Larry's very goal driven, and so <laughs> last year we had just over 1,100 Sinclair members um, and about 1.8 million dollars. So we have set a goal for this year, which we will need your help in achieving, and also you reaching out to some of your friends. We want to have 1,200 Sinclair members and two million dollars. So please help us reach that goal. Reach out to those that you know, and uh, think of these two stories that we heard tonight, and certainly that's a compelling reason to do so. so. Thank you very much. Lois, would you like to come up for a moment? Lois Bunce, the CEO of United Way. Thank Uh, well, I just want to thank James and Barbara um, as our Sinclair committee chairs. Uh, they've done this several years in a row, and they actually volunteered to be committee chairs. And I know uh, that's a bit unusual because usually, he volunteered? yeah, he volunteered. <laughs> he didn't tell you about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Usually we're coming after you and saying, would you please step up? But these two stepped up on their own, and we truly appreciate it. Uh, we've had great results in the Sinclair Society. As you know, it's our second largest uh, giving level. Uh, the Tocqueville level is the next one. That's 10000 but you can aspire to go there if you really want to. Uh, but we are very fortunate to have them as part of our community. Uh, thank you also to Mark and Kathy. They're doing a great job. We're keeping them very, very busy on the campaign trail right now, and are seeing some good results. So thank you all for everything that you do. Uh, stay uh, as long as you want. Pat and Judy said, as long as you want, you can be here, have some drinks and food, and uh, enjoy your evening. Thanks so much. Thank you.